Hi, I'm Paula Croxon from Columbia University's Zuckerman Institute. I'm a neuroscientist and I love thinking about the brain. Today, we're going to record from our actual brains using nothing but a video clip and something to record our responses with. Nowadays, if we want to study the brain, we can use brain scans or even record from individual neurons. But how do we study the brain before we have those tools available to us? Well, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, psychologists wanted to understand how our senses worked. One idea they had about the world is that our senses don't process every single thing that comes in. They only process the things that are really important to us. Imagine you're walking down a trail. If you notice every single teeny tiny bump in the trail, you'll never make it to your destination. You'll always be stopping. What you really want your visual system to do is only alert you to the bumps that are big enough to cause you to trip over. In order to test whether this is true, psychologists devised a kind of test to see what our visual threshold is, the level at which things become noticeable to us. And today we're going to test that for ourselves. And what you're going to do is watch the video and record your own responses. When you play the experiment, you'll see a series of pairs of fuzzy squares. Each time you see a pair, one of the squares will have a white circle on it. Your job is to stare straight in the center of the two squares where the gray dot is and say whether or not the white circle appears on the left or the right side. Each time a pair appears, we'll call that a trial. So for every trial, you just have to shout out left or right or write down left or right depending on where you think the white circle is. Here's the catch. Sometimes the white circle will be very bright or have high luminance, and sometimes the circle will be very, very dim and have low luminance. You can think of luminance as kind of like the brightness of the circle. So sometimes the trials will be very easy, and sometimes the trials will be so hard that you have to guess. Don't worry, just provide an answer for each one. Let's try a couple of the trials together. Let's try a high luminance one. Ready? Now let's try a harder trial, a low luminance one. Again, just say whether you think the white dot is on the left or the right. If you don't know, guess. Ready? We're going to do 100 trials of this experiment, 10 each of 10 different luminances. They'll be randomly mixed up. You have a few choices of how to record your responses. If you're around another person, you could ask them to record your responses as you shout out left or right. Or you could record an audio file on your phone or your computer. Or you could write them down on a piece of paper in a long string. It's totally up to you. You can also ask other people in your household to do the experiment if you're interested to gather more data from more people. A hundred trials sounds like a lot, but it actually takes less than three minutes to do the experiment. Try to do all of the trials if you can. So I've got my values filled in, number of correct for each luminance. And now I'm just going to go through and map out on a graph like this. And now you can roughly see the shape of my curve. So here I'm around chance and up here I'm getting them all right. And in between here is my inflection point, the point where it changes sharply from chance level to becoming always correct. And for me, that's about 10 or 11. Why do you think it's important to have several examples of each luminance in an experiment like this? If you want to try this experiment for yourself, you can check out all the other resources below, as well as a chance to share your results with us. Thanks and have fun.